I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Everybody. So as you may have heard in the uh, video there, my Magic Plus is starting to have an issue. Uh, matter of fact, this has been kind of ongoing for a little while now. Um, when you pick up the phone and you place a call or you receive a call, there's lots and lots of noise in the audio on this thing. So it's make, it makes it more difficult for the person, uh, for you to be able to hear the person on the other side of the phone. And I also think it actually affects um, your voice as well. So this is a uh, <clears throat> this is a first gen Magic Jack Plus. This unit is from 2012. That's when I got it. I bought it at Walmart back then. Um, it's been in service for all those years. As you can see, I've I've went ahead and pried this loose. There's just adhesive in here that holds this uh, cover on the front. Now the newer Mad Jacks are put together a bit differently. So here's what I suspect is going on. There's a ten there's a ten volt uh, 100 microfarad capacitor right there, and I believe that is our culprit. See. These uh, these magic jacks they get super hot, um, very hot. Yeah, I think with time it has uh, it has aged out this capacitor. Because the thing is, if I let this thing cool off and I plug it back in, it sounds crystal clear. But um, after a while, it starts to get hot, and the the noise comes back. So we're gonna try to change out that capacitor. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. It's gonna be a little bit tricky because uh, I don't have service mount capacitors. All I have is this through-hole capacitor right here. Uh, this is a uh, 100 microfarad uh, electrolytic capacitor rated uh, up to 35 volts. So I'm gonna finish opening this thing up so that way we can get in here and repair this thing. I should mention that if all else fails. I do have a new in the box Magic Jack Go that my mom actually found on clearance at Walmart for nine dollars. So I do have a backup option available should um, this repair not work out. Okay, so I got the cover off, um, or the uh, the front off. You just got to you just got to take your time with it. Um, careful not to. Uh, Stab yourself with a screwdriver or an X-Acto knife. <laughs> and be careful not to break this or most importantly not to break that PCB. So now that we're in, we should be able to pop this out. Yeah, it just pops right out. So this is the Magic Jack Plus PCB. Now many years ago, I actually did a, uh, a teardown video of a Magic Jack Plus, the one that was uh, fried. And I don't think I have that unit no more. Otherwise, I probably could have harvested the cap off of it. Who knows? Um, now, with these surface mount capacitors, they're kind of a bear to get off. Um, <laughs> I'm going to probably take a shortcut on getting this thing off. I'm going to probably just rip it off with a pair of pliers. Now, sometimes, sometimes you can damage the PCB, but I'm just going to give it a shot here see what we get. This with a twist. And there you have it. That did not require much effort at all. So we should note that the uh, the mark on this capacitor represents negative. So we have to keep that in mind when we go to install the replacement capacitor. I already got the soldering iron ready to go. It's warmed up. So 
Let's go ahead and finish popping this off of here. Okay, uh, Trace just uh, popped up. See, that's what I was kind of concerned about. But we still have material left on the PCB to where we can make this uh, connection. That PCB, you had a trace that's popped right off of there. But we have a very small slither of trace left that we can use. I mean, it's very small, but we're going to see what we can do here. Obviously, if this was something super, super important I, that I like really cared about, um, I would have gone the extra mile. But obviously, as I mentioned, as you had seen, I have a brand new Mad Jack Go sitting in the box ready to go just in case. So, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to prep this capacitor for fitment on here. So what we gotta do is take this leg, give a twist here, and immediately give another twist here. Let's go ahead and snip off the excess. And we'll do the same for this other one. Except now on this side we'll go a little further. Give it a twist down. Use the pliers. That's not what I was wanting. <laughs> Let's see here. That should work. And what I'll do is I'll just snip off the excess. Just like that. Now this capacitor didn't leak electrolyte, but in the case where it did, you, you have one that did, um, you would have to... Um, clean that you would you'd have to clean out the PCB but in this case that didn't happen so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just go and add some solder to both both of the traces. Now there's a there's a attached slither of trace left on this PCB. We should be able to make do with that. What is it we'll just have to ball up the solder just a little bit there. So first we'll add some to this one. Try to get that lag off of there. And what is we got enough solder on that one now for this other one. That's gonna be a little bit trickier. Because we don't have much to work with there. I'm 
my theory is though, once we get the uh, once we get the lead in there from the capacitor, we should be able to bridge that. Solder is taking to it. Okay, guys. So I got the uh, the capacitor removed, at least uh, the lead off of this side. Now this trace over here, um, there's not much left, but there is enough left where we can make a connection. So we should be able to we should be able to still fit this on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit the capacitor into place, and the uh, positive lead will have plenty of material. Will have plenty of of pad there for us to set this in place you set this in place with just like that like literally just like that Now we'll just have to add some solder and remove this. Sorry if you can't see exactly what I'm doing here. Got a little bit of loose solder. You got to be careful about loose solder because uh, the last thing you want to happen is for that to go bridge into a different circuit and call it a short. Now I'll just go ahead and add some add some solder in there. And that theoretically should fill in the uh the, yeah, should should be able to bridge the connection. Does look like we're making a connection there. It's a little bitty piece of trace that we're working with, so it's not much. But it does appear that we have made a connection. Okay, guys, I got that capacitor mounted into place, and we did make we did manage to make use of what was left of that trace. Yeah, that's why I don't exactly recommend the, the brute force method of removing capacitors. I mean, at least the uh, the SMD ones. Um, but to be honest, guys, I've had uh, on on surface mount um, soldering, I've had pad break loose even when just using conventional methods of removal. <laughs> so yeah that's the thing that's the thing about surface mount is it's it especially when you're dealing with removal of stuff like this it can be it can be kind of um, a pain to deal with but we do have a replacement cap on there so now what we'll do is we'll uh, put this thing back together and Give it a test and see how it does. And the thing is, now we'll probably have to use some um, tape or glue to hold this thing together because, I mean, it wouldn't take much for it to pop back apart. And we should be able to just barely fit this on here the uh, Magic Jack Plus cover.
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing in and see how it does. Well, that appears to have fixed it. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that's it for this video, but don't forget, there's a lot more interesting stuff on the channel to check out. Also, if this is your first time visiting this channel, feel free to subscribe to keep your channel, and also don't forget to tick the bell so that way you'll get notified of new video posts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, but if you really didn't like it, there is the alternative option available as well. Also, feel free to check out my second channel, CubeComp MTDX. There you'll find videos about bicycling, weather, elevator tours, and all sorts of other neat, interesting stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Feel free to come back, and thank you for your support.